Creating Accessible Excel Files, Chapter 3, Tables. This training video is produced by the Accessibility and Policy Unit of the California Department of Social Services. Basis for this criterion is WCAG 1.3.2, Meaningful Sequence. Tables without structural markup to differentiate between table data cells and non-table data cells creates accessibility barriers. Relying on visual cues alone is not sufficient to create an accessible table. With structural markup, data cells can be programmatically determined by software. This means individuals using screen readers can identify what is part of a particular table and what is not. Screen readers speak one cell at a time, and if the table is built correctly, reference the associated header cells so the reader does not lose context. Following the steps outlined in this training will enable you to make tables in Excel that meet accessibility standards. Now, let's talk about what you need to do to create accessible tables in Excel. The first rule is that to be accessible, all tables in Excel must be simple tables. Simple tables mean no split cells, no merge cells, and only one row or column for a header. The first step to creating a table is to enter your data onto the worksheet. However, entering your data in a simple format with shading and grid lines does not yet make it a table. To make your data into an actual table, you first highlight all the cells you want to include in the table. Start at one end, click and drag the focus to the other end to highlight all cells from A2 through AE7 in this example. With the cells highlighted, select the Insert tab. Select Table. Then, assuming you have already entered data, which will act as a header row, check the box for My Table Has Headers in the Create Table dialog box and select OK. Heads up, often the automatic shading that occurs after making your data into an actual table will not meet the color contrast requirements. Always check your color contrast. Now you have created a table screen reader users can search for and navigate to. However, additional steps need to be taken to ensure the table meets all accessibility standards. With the keystroke of insert plus F5, assistive technology users can open up the go to dialog box to find tables, as well as other elements. This table is currently the only table in this workbook. As you can see in the Go To dialog box, it has been automatically named Table 2. Imagine, however, if you had 5 or 20 or 100 tables and they were each assigned a similar name of table number within the Go To function. A person using assistive technology to access this worksheet would find it impossible to find which table they needed. For a screen reader user, it is critical to hear a descriptive table name, which lets them know a little bit about the content of the table. This helps the screen reader user know which table to select, and then they can navigate directly to that table and listen to the contents of the table. WCAG 2.4.2 requires us to assign meaningful document and workbook titles. This standard also requires us to give descriptive names to other elements that assist in navigation, like tables. Assigning an appropriate and meaningful title to tables allows persons who use assistive technologies to find them more quickly and efficiently. Now let's review creating descriptive table titles. Step one for creating a descriptive table title is to select the formulas tab. Step two is to select Name Manager. Step three is to select the table which you want to edit the table name. It will appear highlighted in dark blue once the table is selected. Step four is select Edit. Step five, enter in some meaningful descriptive information into the name field. Note, spaces cannot be used, but underscores can separate out the sound of the words for the screen reader users. Step six, select OK. Now there will be a descriptive table names which screen reader users can use to select a table and immediately navigate to that table. 
The last and most important step for meeting the accessibility standard is assigning a title region to the table. A title region will connect the column and row headers to every cell in the table. For example, when a screen reader user arrows to the right from Flores to Ed, they will hear first name and Ed. Without assigning a title region, just Ed would be heard. Assistive technology can only connect the information between the data cell and the header cell if we apply a title region. All data tables must be created so that this functionality exists for screen reader users. If you imagine a table that has hundreds or thousands of cells, you can see how significant this piece of table accessibility can be for a screen reader user. Regardless of the size of a table, a title region must be applied. The first step in assigning a title region for any table is you must have focus in the upper left-hand cell of the table. For this table, focus is placed in cell A2. A dark green line will frame that cell. Even if you do all the rest of the steps correctly, if you do not start with focus in the upper left-hand cell prior to creating the title region formula, it will be broken and will not function for the screen reader user. Step two for creating a title region is selecting the formulas tab. Select name manager, step three. Then step four, select new in the name manager dialog box that pops up. Step five, in the name field of the new name dialog box, you need to enter a title region formula, which is specific to each table. We will explain each part of the formula. First, type in title region. No spaces should be in the title region formula. Then, identify which table it is on the sheet. For this one, it is the only table and will therefore be the first table. Then, enter a period in the first cell of the table. In this case, it is A2. Then enter another period in the last cell of the table. This table ends at E7. Finally, enter another period in which sheet of the workbook the table is on. Sheet tabs are found in the lower left of the sheet. This table is found on sheet 1. Now our title region formula is complete. Title region 1.a2.e7.1. To recap, ensure you are focused in the upper left-hand cell. Type in title region with no spaces, which table it is on the sheet, one, a period, the cell in which the table begins, A2, a period, the cell in which the table ends, E7, a period, and which sheet the table is on, one. Each table will have a unique title region which tells the screen reader which data belongs to that table, and more specifically, which column and row headers apply to the data cells in that table. If the table only has column headers, simply type column before the rest of the title region formula, such as column title region 1.a2.e7.1. If the table only has row headers, simply type row before the rest of the title region formula, such as row title region 1.a2.e7.1. Keep in mind that no spaces can exist in the formula. Note, if it is a large workbook with many sheets, the following steps can be used to figure out the last number of the title region formula. While on the sheet in which you are working on the title region for a table, select the Alt key and the F11 key. This keystroke will bring up Microsoft's Visual Basic for Applications, VBA project. The sheet will be highlighted and show what the sheet number is. For this title region formula, the sheet number is 1. Again, this step is typically only necessary when there is a large workbook in it, and it is hard to find the sheet number for the title region formula. Creating the title region formula may be the most pertinent step in creating an accessible table. Without a title region, it becomes difficult to impossible for screen reader users to track how data cells correlate with column and header rows within a table. The only way you can tell if you assigned a title region correctly is to listen with a screen reader such as NVDA. 
With the screen reader on, arrow to the right in the table, cell by cell. Does the column header read with the data cell? If yes, all of the steps were done correctly. Conversely, if your title region was entered correctly, the row header should be heard along with the data of the cell while traveling up and down within the table. The built-in accessibility checker will not notify you if a group of data has been made into an actual table, nor can check for descriptive titles or if title regions have been applied. A manual check is required to ensure your Excel table is accessible. Always use the quick checks developed by the Accessibility and Policy Unit to guide you through your manual check. Remember, the only way to check if a title region was made correctly is to listen to the data cells with the screen reader. Make sure the table headers read with each cell. Running a manual check will be discussed in more detail in Chapter 7. In review, creating an actual accessible table that has a descriptive table title will make it possible for assistive technology users to search for and navigate to tables. The title region will make it possible for screen reader users to hear column and row headers read aloud with each data cell as they navigate through the table. For more information about this topic or any of the topics in our series, contact the Accessibility and Policy Unit at accessibilitypolicyunit at dss.ca.gov.